All right. I'm taking these uh, IMs out. We're going to replace them with something else. Hello, I'm Zeos Pantera, the host of uh, In Ear Fetish, Z Reviews, Z Unboxing, Z Cooks, Zeos Second Channel, Twitch Streamer, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays. What are you people doing here? Oh, that's right. You're here to watch me do shit. Um, all right. So, hi from an EF400 disting. And it's a DAC amp combo, and it's around $500. The market is six. Uh, APOS is for like 500 Hold on. I've got the prices up. It's on Amazon for 530 It's on APOS for 500 It's, where are we here? We're on, it's Bloom Audio has it for six. Uh, Audio 46 has it for six. There is a post on it on Hi-Fi Guides. If you haven't been to the Hi-Fi Guides forum, there's a post, and I get to post my review. Wow, it's a big, long, that's a, that's a huge review on uh, Hi-Fi Guides. And then Hi-Fi Min itself, you want to see the description Hi-Fi Min put for specifications? That little blurb. That little blurb. Um... We're gonna have a guest reviewer here on Z Reviews for probably, well, probably the second time. Um, Golden Sound just released a review of this today. Kind of what made me want to do it because I've had it here for a while. It's been sitting back there for a few weeks. But at the same time, it's like, it's been sitting here for a few weeks. Let's talk about it. And I didn't watch his review. I just started praising the hell out of the way this thing sounds in my patronage chat. And then he chimed in with, well, do you know why? And I'm like, no enlighten me and he did and therefore he will enlighten you a little bit later on um i've got a really weird selection of headphones here some real good ones hg600s the new athenas from harmonic dime which is their semi-closed uh kph40s i've got the oh I'll clean that off i've got the uh dunu zen pros which are my stethoscope for listening to noise floor by the way noise floor in this pretty much non-existent even on high gain it's like nothingness. The the ones that might shock you, not the Dianas. You all know I got the Dianas, so I'm like, okay, I could actually assess things with Dianas. These might shock you. These are Emotiva headphones, and I never take them off the wall. But I was sitting here listening to this for the first time, just going over like, okay, this, oh, oh, this, oh. And I started looking at my wall going, what headphones do I not listen to? Because they're kind of harsh and kind of suck. I want to see if this will fix those, because this thing is doing, I would call it magic, but then Golden Sound explained why it's not magic, and I'm like, fucking, he ruined the magic. He ruined the magic. But then if you look at Megumin there, you're like, okay, Megumin is quote unquote best girl. She's not. But uh, but she's she's kind of she's kind of like good. She's kind of good, but then she's got something really wrong with her. And that's this. I am gonna fully endorse the High Femin EF 400 Um, but I hate that my watch constantly slips around. It's like I need to glue it to my wrist. But it does have a flaw that has been explained to me, and it'll be explained to you in a, in a bit, that it's either going to turn you off or turn you on. In my case, I'm turned on. Um, we should take a tour of the unit because you know the price, and you know what's sort of in the in the relation. You can get a, a really nice Gishelli stack. You could get the JDS Labs Element 3, with the boosted option, if you wanted to, you could get, God, what are the other, there's just so many toppings and SMSL things you could stack for $500. You, if you wanted a combo, like you can get the, the cheaper Fio K7 or jump up more than this and get the K9. I've got the, right there, the Aoun X8, uh, X1S GT is down there. There's a bunch of good combos. So what makes this one special, Zeos? Well, the fact that it weighs like seven pounds, oh God, because it's got a toroidal transformer in it. The fact that it looks like this, like, like oh God, I'm gonna get ripped off the table. Um, this looks very nice. Like hi fi Min doesn't really make, like exude, like luxury when you look at their stuff. Like, you know it's good. You know the Susvara is good, but they, eh. but look at this thing. Other than the fact that the, the rest of the box is not even like machined aluminum. It's just, it's just a steel box. But man, did they fucking pull out all the stops for this fascia. You've got glass. You've got two matching knobs. You've got your four point, you've got your four pin XLR. And then this 
is a quarter inch jack. I don't know what's happening around it. It's, it's got a slot, which can someone please tell me if that's actually a thing that can do. You've got your 4.4, uh, which is very tightly holding onto this, and you got a 3.5. So you don't really need to use any adapters. You could use that or that, and that or that. You get your two balanced, you get your two unbalanced. Uh, really, really tight. Volume knob here. Very smooth, very lightweight. And then this is the most overdone gain switch I've seen in a thing in a while. You have four LED lights that listen. So you got low gain NOS, low gain OS, high gain OS, and high gain NOS. Now, uh, OS stands for oversampling, NOS stands for non oversampling. So we'll talk more about that in a second if I get back to it and I'm not dumb. The rear of the unit is dirt. This is dirt basic. Power in main power switch, in fact, only power switch, so pfft, negative points. You get a USB A, and is it A or is it B? You just get USB in, but it's the full size USB in. You got a USB type C in. That's your only inputs. This is only USB in, which is what it took me so long to get it on the desk because I had to pull up my laptop because I'm not plugging you into anything. I don't want drivers on this old Windows 7 machine. That no one will do it. You get XLR outputs from the DAC, the R2R DAC, the R2R FPGA DAC, the really nice fucking DAC, the Himalaya DAC that's in it. You get your outputs, full line out, no control. You get your RCA outs, full line out, no control. So if this was just a DAC, this would be the dumbest, easiest DAC done. No fiber optic input, no coaxial input, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi control. It's just USB out. The end. The front gives you a headphone out that's good for four. It says four and a half watts. And as much as I don't like reading reviews after I started researching into things, it's not quite four and a half watts. And I could kind of tell like we're pushing things, but I don't want to push them to the maximum. So let's take we're on the Dianas. We can leave this on high. Um, let's talk about the NOS versus OS. So usually people will tell you to put a non oversampling on. So you get the fullest bits right to the thing. Problem is, I don't like the non oversampling on this. And I can't tell you why. It just feels like a sandwich without mayonnaise. Like, oh, the oversampled versions are just the the overall sound of this amp, which I'm going to get to right now, is this thing is the king of smoothing out your problems. I took these off the wall because these have a little bit of harshness to them. They're a little bit too bright, a little bit too sibilant, but my God, they're built well, and I really kind of fucking like them, but I don't pull them down because, eh. On this, smooth. Put on non-oversampling, it's like less smooth. It, I feel like the way that the oversampling sounds on this, they shouldn't even have included non-oversampling. Someone should have heard it and gone, yeah, no, just don't, just don't. We gotta talk about why these are here too, because I've got a thing here that's happening which explains it, but that's, we'll get to the, um, you know what, fuck it, we'll get to it right now. Lower this. My basic uh, take out on this is this thing sounds fucking phenomenal, and you're all gonna be like, well, Zios, you like everything, the way everything sounds, but yeah, but I plug into everything, and sometimes something steps up and it does something different. And I said, this is something special. This is doing something different. I really, really am enjoying the way this sounds. And then um, after describing it and going back and forth with Golden a few times, um, he sent me this one minute thing. I'll link to Golden Sound's YouTube channel in the description, so. Uh, yeah, exactly the same thing happening there with dual one and and stuff. So if you like it, that's, that's fine. Um, for me, I, 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 it makes me dizzy, so I really don't. Um, as to what's causing it, I posted a write-up, just uh, 10 or so messages above. Um, it's basically... This is, by the way, the patronage chat. For $10 a month, you too can come into the patronage chat and have a discussion with me and Golden Sound and hear us discussing our things um, and ask me questions again into a lifetime swap meet channel. So, oh, by the way, this mouse pad, in case you noticed, links to that as well in the description because that's cute. I have a couple of them. We're going to be swapping around. But yeah, if you want the giant Sailor Moon cats, I think they are. Yeah, is where you got it. 
when you make a deck with two decks in it, like dual decks, um, because of the fact that, you know, I2S, which is what they use internally, it doesn't give both the left and right samples to each deck at the same time. It goes, right, here's all the left stuff, right, now here's all the right stuff. Uh, if you don't implement a delay in one channel so that, you know, it goes, right, I've got my right stuff, I'm going to wait until the left channel is ready, and now we both output at the same time. Instead, if you just have it go, right, I've got the right stuff and I'm going to output now, even though the left channel still not got all of its data yet, you end up with one channel ahead of the other. So it's basically a mistake that some manufacturers have made when they're designing decks with two decks in it, uh, where they, they don't have them aligned properly because they're not handling the I2S signal correctly. So that was the explanation to me on to why this sounds good. Because if you've watched my channel for more than probably a year, it's, I haven't done this all the time, but I have this weird fascination with like, okay, mono block amplifiers. We all understand that. You have a, an amplifier for the right and an amplifier for the left. But then you usually plug it into one box, which is your DAC or control box. So I always was like, why couldn't you just have two DACs? Like this right here, these are SMSL Sanskrit 10th anniversary edition DACs. They're like $100, $120. They're not expensive. They do this cool thing where the screen will rotate. As you as you rotate the unit in any orientation, it'll work in 360 degrees. Why you'd want that? Don't know, but it's cool. But these are powered with USB. They're both getting a fiber optic signal off of a splitter. I literally have a USB, a fiber optic splitter. So the fiber optic cable goes in and I got like five out and two of those are going into these. And then I have the right channel of this DAC hooked up to this amplifier here and the left channel of this DAC hooked up to this amplifier here. So both of these, while being completely separate pieces of equipment are doing the exact same job. But since they're not in the same chassis, sharing the same power supply, sharing the same chip, they're slightly misaligned. Now, whether it's tilted like this, like the hi fi min, that's what he just described, is that it's making left and right channels via the Himalaya R2R are happening one sample off. Not like half a second where you could like, oh my God, my head's twisting. One sample. You know how many samples are in a thing? Like 44,000 in a second. But that's enough that some people, him included, and I, it's weird because I've been looking at, I don't look at reviews on the internet, but I just had to like, I had to see. This is the most polarizing piece of equipment I've seen because it's affordable. It looks fucking stellar. And some people like me love it to death. And some people like Golden are like, fix it. Because they can fix it with like a firmware update. They might be able to fix it. And they could just add the delay that takes it from like encoding the right channel, encoding the left channel to delay this and bring it down or delay this and bring it down. And then it'll output normally. So for a little experiment, I had this outputting into the LA90, which is my go-to desktop amplifier. Even though it's for speakers, it works fucking spectacularly for headphones. Um... And input two is this, and if I turn it up, because since it's the DAC fucking up, the headphone section in this, by the way, no noise, smooth as butter. If it's the R2R Himalaya DAC that's making it sound this good, that gets transferred over to whatever you plug it into. I haven't done it to speakers yet, but I enjoy, I'm enjoy I was like, I'm plugging into this, and I'm gonna plug into this, and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, ooh, I'm feeling that little bit of, mm right in there. So now I've added this to the desk, which I haven't had that hooked up in a while. And if I switch to input three, which is a different input, let's actually over here. Let's go to Amber Rubarth. Amber, where are you, Amber? You actually, no, wait, Asterix, who art. So now this amplifier is using two DACs. Same as this DAC has two DACs that are misaligned. This is almost guaranteed to be misaligned. They're cheap DACs, but they're not like off. You just notice something different. The sound stage gets like wider. In fact, I have input one is down there is a Musician Pegasus, which is a R2R single unit DAC that's correct, at least as far as I know. And you can hear the difference going if I had them playing the same song before, where I went through input one, input two, input three. Input one being a solid known variable DAC and it sounded a certain way, and it's like, all right, cool. Switch to two, which was this, the dual, and I'm like, oh, this does something that I like, and then switch to three, which is this, and I'm like, it's doing something that I like. So, 
Uh, when it's different songs, it's not as revealing. But Juno Reactor, Conquistador, Asterix Remix, apparently. How long is this song? Nine minutes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give this a recommendation. It has this problem, all right? I, I, it's sort of like understanding how magic tricks work. Like, me personally, as a reviewer, I don't want to know everything that's going on. If it's going to set fire to your house, I should probably tell you. But if there's something wrong, like a problem, and just happens to be a good problem, I, I'm, I, I'm okay with a little bit of willful, willful ignorance, just being like, wow, this fucking thing sounds smooth as butter, and I can't figure out what it is. Having it explained doesn't take away from the fact that I absolutely fucking love it. Now, here will be the problem. If they stop selling them with this problem and then they straighten them out and for some reason that just like ruins the magic, that's that's on me or that's on hi -Fi Men. Right now, I don't know how they would do the, a firmware upgrade on this without doing something through the USB. I mean, it's got a computer hookup, so it should be able to just, you know, install a little thing. And I would hope they would give you the option to go back to this firmware should you not like a corrected firmware. Let's go back to the uh, to these. It, it's so weird sitting here with just a, a selection of headphones going. I'm I, I've done it with KPH forties just plugged into this. I'm like, God, this sounds fucking good. And then being explained, well, here's why in grave technical details, and I'm just like, well. Yeah, but I kind of do that shit anyway with my dual DAX, and I have to I have to give you the fucking knowledge. If I have knowledge, I have to share it. But I'm gonna still tell you this: I fucking love this thing. It doesn't work in my scenario because it's got to be USB. I I don't want to have like everything here all comes out of one SU6 distributed through fiber optic, coaxial digital, AES. II-S, all that unit down there feeds all the DACs around here, and I'm good. It can't work in my scenario. But if you're the one person who just needs one piece of audio equipment, which what the hell is wrong with you if you need one piece of audio equipment? What are you doing on this channel? Um, I'm gonna I'm going to recommend this highly, highly. Just know that it might change in the future with a firmware update, and that officially there's something wrong with it just like megumin there's something wrong with her very much so but we love her all the same so yeah no ef 400 I, I i didn't know what to expect and now that i know what i get, i'm getting and then getting explained it to me it's sort of like a uh, anyway dual dax my thing links to the the wall, wall the floor paper and the wallpaper in the hoard um like i said if you want to chat with me or any a lot of other reviewers actually um check out uh, my patrons chat for ten dollars a month you get to ask me any questions you want you get into a lifetime swap meet chat for buying selling and trading gears gear what's up the drake um for five dollars a month, you get to see these reviews early, participate in yard sales, which happen from the first to the tenth of every month, including international shipping. If you're anywhere in the world and you want to buy something, like I got to figure out who sent this. I think Hyphen sent it, and they probably won't want it back. If I'm not gonna keep it around, which is so annoying to use it because fucking USB only, um, then it will be in the yard sale, and I would ship it to anywhere you want. And then you also the sound demos are now completely and entirely in privatized uh, channel. So if you want to. Hear sound demos, see sound demos, watch videos on sound demos. They're all happening there. So for five dollars a month, you get access to all that, and then ten for the chat, and then check out Hi-Fi Guides, which I get to post this review there to uh, upon this conclusion. I have no doubt. I didn't read this, by the way. That's I spent all the time looking at how many words, and I was like, mm. um, I have no doubt the Hi-Fi Neo Foreigner gives you a lot for what it costs, with a great build quality, good performance, and a very reasonable price. Is it the best system I've ever heard? No. Is there something that I've heard this place that feels better? No. So who wrote this? This is Anchor Reviews? Hold on, this is so long. Jesus, God. This is Senor C on um, 
Hi, five guys. Who is Anchor Reviews? So yeah, no. I, I like it. I really fucking like it. Having the magic sort of removed by telling me what's wrong with it sort of sort of changes my aspect on it. But at the same time, I'm going to give it a full fucking thumbs up. So yeah, I, it's been sitting here for a while. People want to know, well, now you know I love it. But now you know why I love it. And maybe you'll love it too. Because, I mean, doing what I do is possible. But at the same time, this is just way fucking easier. And holds its retail value. 